I'd much rather do this than have to go under the knife again. <laughs> it's been four years almost that I made the transition. I am guilty of like saying, oh, I don't know if I can do this. Just trying stuff out with a lighter weight and lighter weight doesn't mean it doesn't count. I'm going to the gym and I'm doing all this stuff, but I'm not really getting the results. So what am I gonna do about it? All right, good morning, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Fit Vegan Podcast. Today, I am joined by a fit vegan superstar that I got the pleasure of meeting a few weeks ago in Washington. All right, welcome to the Fit Vegan Podcast. I'm your show host, Maxim Seguin, and I'm the founder and CEO of Fit Vegan Coaching, a company that is on a mission to help 10,000 people get lean, thrive, and reduce their risk of chronic illnesses by 2033 and a million by 2050. I believe that having a fit, healthy body in mind is the foundation to living an incredible life, and this is what little show will give you if you choose to listen and implement. Enjoy the episode and have a great day. Karen, Karen, how are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. Maxim, how are you doing? Good. Welcome to the show. I'm happy that we get to finally record your episode. I'm great to be here also. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah. How, how does it feel from lit, going from listening to some of the episodes to now we're about to dive into deep into your story? A little scary because it's like you never know what you're going to pull out of me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All only good stuff. Honestly, I want the authentic stuff, right? Whatever yes. you're, you're comfortable, comfortable sharing, yeah. right? As they say, um, a lot of people think that I have conversations with the members before and they're like, don't say anything negative about the programs. Like, just be genuine, right? I've, yes. It's been the same for all the other episodes. I just want the truth, right? Um, and so, yeah, let, let's dive into your story. Um, can you give a little background as to kind of who you are, what you do, so people understand that you do have a life outside of working out and that's not all you do 24-7? Yeah, it seems like that's not, um, I have more workout time than other time. But yeah, I'm in um, kind of the retirement age and retired a few years ago and was working a job one one day a week, physical therapy position. But I've been active all of my life. Um, I'm a scientist by training. I have a master's degree in oceanography. I did lots of cool stuff during my career. But I started working out probably in my 30s. Um, I was out doing a walk, long walk with somebody, and I noticed she had pretty awesome looking legs. I'm like, how'd you get those legs? So she told me what she was doing, going to the gym. So I started doing that. I got certified to teach aerobics, and I taught aerobics classes and strength training classes. In addition to going to my main gig, real job, I taught like at 6.50 in the morning and then got dressed and then drove 45 minutes to work. I did that a couple of days a week. So I've been weight lifting since my 30s. And then during that, um, but I've also had two kids and I got a bunch of grandkids and I like to travel. Um, so that's kind of where I am right now. Um, I'm married. Yeah. And, um, Life's been great. Yeah. So was it a good pair of quads, a good pair of glutes that converted you to strength training? I think it was the quads. And I used okay. to do, I did, there was one of the other instructors that we would do legs with Laurie on Saturday. And we would do the leg press and the Smith Max squat. And she had the quads and I had the hamstrings. And we like, you know, can we just switch off? Can I get your quads? Can I get your hamstrings? But um, yeah, yeah, that's kind of what we used to do. <laughs> yeah, big big hamstrings are so impressive, but a quad, a big quad is hard to mm -hmm. build. Yes. And you know, s some of it is genetic, right? You have that little teardrop at the bottom with like the two, the yes. two quads basically that you can see. And some people predominantly attaches lower, and you can see it. Some people it attaches higher, and yeah. So just genetics sometimes have blessed us with great quads or not so great quads. Yeah, at this point, yeah. I'm probably not going to get it because I've been trying for a long time. <laughs> but I'll take, I'll keep my hamstrings. <laughs> yeah, well, you're you're super fit. Again, we we met in Washington for the PCRM conference. It was like what two two weeks ago, maybe. Yeah, I think I've yeah. been back for two weeks now. Um, and yeah, you you look like an athlete. When we had our fit vegan dinner with everyone, like everyone's like, yeah, you you look like, you're shaped like an athlete. Yeah, I, um, I actually was actually playing the part for a little while. I decided to do it um, actually for my 60th birthday. I did 240, 260-mile bike ride from St. Augustine, Florida to, to Palm Beach Gardens over three days. 
And then a couple of years after that, I decided to train for a sprint triathlon and I did not know how to swim. So I had to learn okay. how to swim at 60 plus, And that was really challenging, but um, I loved the training and it was great. And I ended up coming in second in my age class. So that was, that was during the, t- uh, that during that period of time, I was an athlete. I was training probably 10, 12 hours a week. So um, yeah. Oh, I know the life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so let me ask you, um, you know, having a, a background in fitness and kind of always being fit, which by the way, I didn't know you had a master's and you said oceanography. oceanography. I, I, yes. Oceanography. Yeah, so, I didn't know that about you. That's cool. Yeah. They, um, well, I actually always wanted to be like Jack Cousteau. So I actually, um, yeah. went to school and then I went to graduate school in Rhode Island and, um, then worked for the federal organization that does all the fisheries management on the Atlantic, uh, on the East coast, Atlantic ocean. So I've been able to go on Japanese and Russian fishing vessels and collect fish and count fish. And then I um, worked for a nonprofit for a while doing lots of oceanography stuff, including artificial reefs. So it was lots of fun. And I finished off my career doing work for the Army Corps of Engineers, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers Civil Works Projects. So it was that's amazing. Yeah. Well, hey, let me steer the conversation away from the program for a second. Question is that does that have ties as to what made you go vegan at one point? Was there like a connection there? Um, probably not really. I think that all came. I was vegetarian probably really young, like probably in my 20s. And then I started, you know, just eating meat and stuff like that. I think the thing that changed me was I just started I always like to learn and I'm, I like to read. And I'm always interested in some of sciences. I'm always delving do- deeper. And I just started to hear so much about food we were eating and the quality of the food. And of course, watching, you know, folks over nice movies and the, the documentaries, all those documentaries, and just starting to think more about it and say, you know what, I think I'm going to make the transition. And I realized I loved eating vegetables. Um, so it's been probably like four years almost that I made the transition. Yeah. Um, there was one period of time that I dropped back and kind of started eating meat for a little while because I had some injuries and I thought like, oh, I might need to eat the meat. But um, then, I'm, then I stopped. I'm like, I can't do this. <laughs> yeah, it's it's such a I feel like it's common for new people that transition. Yeah. They're like, yeah. it, it might be better for recovery, right? When you're yeah. newer to it, there's a little yeah. bit of that uncertainty that you want to do the right thing for yourself. I think the hardest yeah. thing for me was giving up the fish because that was like yeah. my career. I ate a lot of fish. I was a fish snob. You know, if it only if it didn't come from a certain place, I wouldn't eat it. So that was the hardest thing, giving up, you know, the sea, the fish, the seafood, not the fried stuff, but just, you know, catching it myself and eating it so yeah yeah oh interesting okay so now going back to, to the fitness you obviously you start working out you mentioned i think uh in your in your 30s um what was what made you want to kind of reach out for help and kind of get help with this this next chapter of your life with, with fitness what made you want to reach out to us i probably spent 10 plus years working with trainers like really good trainers um from, you know, people at one of the, the gyms to somebody that was training people for bodybuilding competitions. I lived in Alaska for like six months and there was a trainer there at the gym that pretty much trained me. I probably, if I stayed longer, I might've done a competition. And I didn't have that. I haven't had that for the last three years since COVID, my trainer that I had just decided to do something else right before COVID hit. So I know enough Mm. to go in there, the exercises, but I was doing the same thing and wasn't getting results. And I like a structured program. I like somebody to tell me, do this and I will do it. So when I heard um, you get interviewed on the exam room, I was actually driving home from hiking. I just finished hiking, I don't know, 10, 12 miles, something crazy. And I drove it home. Like, And then you said the ages of the people that are your clients. I said, oh my goodness, I'm definitely falling out. This sounds like, I didn't even think about what is the cost, whatever, but this sounds like something I really need and want. And I had been following somebody that worked, that kind of focused on women that had gone through menopause, but yeah. they weren't vegan. They weren't, they didn't do that type of focused eating. 
thing. And so the stuff that they were providing conflicted with what I wanted to, what I wanted to get out of it. So I knew that yeah. wasn't for me, but what I heard you talk about sounded very interesting. Yeah. I feel like that's uh, the case for a lot of people. They'll, they'll have other people that they can to follow and, but they're not vegan. And then right. if you work with them, they'll be like, Hey, at least, at least eat some eggs, at least have some right. whey protein. And they're trying to nudge you in that really high protein consumption area. Right. Yeah. No, that's awesome. Yeah. It's, uh, it's always interesting when I talk to people and they ask me what I do. It's people that don't come from the online world. They don't know who I am. Mm-hmm. I'm like, Oh, I work with people predominantly between, you know, 45, like 50, 45 to like 75 to like, Oh, Oh, I didn't expect that by, by looking at you. And yeah, that's our area of specialty. Yeah. I'm great. I'm really glad that you specialize in that area. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think, you know, I think it's a big thing, you know, decreasing lean muscle and like sarcopenia, osteoporosis kind of happens as you right. get older. And a lot of people don't understand the importance yeah. of resistance training, how to combat these two things. And so I'm curious, what were, what were some of the changes that you saw uh, since you've been working with us? You're still in the program right now. Yes. Yeah, so I've seen, I pretty defined back muscles. So I've seen those come back. My shoulders have gotten definitely more adult, much more developed. And, you know, um, don't even know how to say this, but my glutes have like tightened up. My clothes, even though the yeah. scale's not really That's strong, the right way to say my, it. <laughs> my clothes have gotten loose around there. And I'm seeing like yeah. kind of tightness and lines in my body, like um, around my waist that, that indicate that there's some more muscle there than yeah. um, just flesh and fat. <laughs> yeah. Well, you definitely have more striations um, in your in your photos. And obviously when we met in person as well, you can definitely tell. Yeah. You got like round shoulders, bicep is sticking out, tricep yeah. is sticking out, your forearms are lean as well. Um, how, how does it feel to kind of have, you know, increased in your strength um, over the past few months? That's pretty, it's been pretty awesome. There were some things that I bowed away from because, you know, the chiropractor always said, oh, you shouldn't do deadlifts anymore. You shouldn't do this. You shouldn't do that. And I was kind of nervous about, ooh, should I do these? But when I looked at your videos for each one of the um, exercises and just followed the form and just started out lighter and just really focused on my form, I was able to do it like the deadlifts. I got those mixed up with Romanian ones, which a little bit more challenging for me with issues with my lower back. But the deadlifts, once I figured those out, I'm like, these are cool. I I love doing those. And um, the split squats, um, I just wrote a note to my my trainer and said, you know, today's was really hard because we had the, everything was single leg and I just upped the weights. It's just been great to feel really strong. But I realized that sometimes you have to just check your pride because you may decide like, let me just try a higher weight. And I know if something gets hurt, I'm out of commission for a couple of weeks. So I try to check the pride at the door. If I'm feeling it, I do it. Like last week I'd done, I got up like 10 pounds on one of my exercises. I said, you know what? I'm not gonna go up on the next one, you know? Yeah. I'm not going to increase on two, two exercises of one session. Yeah. So what would, besides the deadlift, what are other exercises that you've seen an increase in strength that, that felt pretty cool? Bicep curls. I can okay. pretty okay. much do, I think, 20 pounds easily, which is pretty awesome. I haven't tried the 25 yeah. yet. That will probably be three. <laughs> maybe <laughs> hey hey you got more than one so <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that um let me see what else i've done i think that the the split squat i'm going i've added a lot of weight what i tend to do when i get a new exercise is i'll start out with a little bit of weight and then just gradually increase it maybe that same day and then the next day, yeah. the next week, I'll start at that heavier weight and see if I can increase it anymore until it gets to the point, like, like you said, have one or two reps left in the bag, you know? Yeah. So, um, the yeah. Upper, so the upper body chest press, I've done some chest press. Um, I had to move to a different gym because <laughs> the gym I was at ran out of heavy weights for my legs. 
So I go to a different. Hey, to that's a good day. flex. Huh? That's a that's a good flex. That's a good problem. I'm too strong for this, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have, they didn't have heavy enough weights for my legs. So. Yeah. Um, and so just for the people listening, Karen, how, how old are you right now? I'm 67. Yeah. And you're for running out of January. weights at your gym for your legs. Yeah. <laughs> That's impressive. I, I've never been able to say that before. Yeah. Well, it's one, of, I think and I so, talked to you about it. So it's one of the gyms that has a lot of fixed weights. So if you go higher than the fixed weights they have, you just kind of out of luck. So. Yeah, but that's still pretty strong because most people can't max out those those machines. So we'll we'll definitely we'll definitely take that win. Um, and in terms of in terms of obviously you've seen body recomposition changes. You mentioned you've kind of noticed things kind of tighten up. There's right. more striations. Your clothes fit differently. But have you seen um, you know your strength increase kind of translates to area of your life outside? of the gym that you notice like, oh, it's pretty cool. I can lift this. I can do this thing now. Um, I'm, yeah, I can lift things. I, I think I have enough strength. Like a friend of mine wanted to go hiking the other day and it was like, oh, we're just going to do 12 miles, you know? Well, it turned into, she's a hiking fanatic. It turned into almost 17 miles and 3,700 feet of elevation. And I'm like, I'm going to be crippled tomorrow, but I wasn't. I was strong enough to like my legs yeah. were strong enough. I was able to make it through all of that. So um, I just feel, I think at the past, before I started working with you, I was always nervous about throwing my back out because I have this disc thing that's going yeah. on. I was always afraid of it. I'm not as afraid of it anymore. I think I've gotten tired. And one that Sarah had talked about, like, because I said, I'm nervous about doing this. She said, well, we're trying to strengthen the muscles around that area. So I now believe that that's what's happened. So I'm not as nervous about um, certain exercises. Yeah. And when you look at, you mentioned your deadlift. Now that you've learned to master the form and the movement and you, you've kind of yeah. started with a smaller weight and you've increased up, I think right. a lot of people uh, are afraid to throw their back out. I think it's probably like one of the most common things that people mm -hmm. come to us with. And right. a lot of time it's when they bend down or they do something they're pulling with their back, right? When you right. know, when you do a deadlift, it's glutes and hamstrings. Right. So obviously right. you're, you're, you're removing the tension from the lower back and you're throwing on your glutes and hamstring, which is a lot stronger right. than, than your lower back. And ultimately that's why you're going to feel more confident. You know how to move properly. I think it's the best way to put right. it. Right. I've learned to hip hinge instead of forward flex. That's yes. I speak with the gear to get them done. Yeah. It's a, uh, I thought that was an important part to mention in the video for the deadlift, right? Mm -hmm. Is you squat until you get to the knees. And then once you pass it, you clear the knees, then you hip hinge. And it makes it so much easier right. to do a deadlift that way. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, so I'm curious, uh, you know, being a part of the program, I see on multiple group calls, interacting in a group chat. I'm curious what were some of the tools that were the most helpful for you or that you've enjoyed while you've been in the program? Um, I always like your calls where we talk about how to push, you know, to stronger, do heavier, you know, push back when you're um, kind of stalled. And then Sarah, yeah. like one week particularly, she kind of, you know, scraped me off the ceiling because, you know, the food was not working, everything I was just having like meltdowns, you know, just the, the my struggle is the, is the, um, the food plan, the meal planning. So that was really helpful. I'm not able to usually get on the um, calls with the recipes. I've been on one of them and I didn't realize that this is so helpful because the doctors on there just answering questions. And that's really great. And then yeah. Nick just helped me understand zone two and um, training and just some of the more cardio um, side of things, but also talking about like what's the rep, what's the set. And just kind of reminding me of all those things and what to focus on. Yeah. So would you say that you've learned new things through the group calls? Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. And, and okay. you know, there was one call, there was a lady on and she was talking about um, feeling like she was going backwards. And unfortunately, that was one I was listening to, but I wish I had been on because I had that feeling because I had started the program. I was doing squats with the Smith machine, putting a lot of weight on. And I talked to Sarah, I'm like, okay, I'm going to be humble and just like go back to start. 
And she says, you'll get back to where you need to be. But I realized with the Smith machine, it's all assisted and I'm not using my yeah. core and you can't lift. So those that kind of confirms something I thought, because when I was on the Smith machine, I could do a ton of weight. But when I just did the back squat with just the bar, I had to drop the weight a lot because I had to stabilize myself. So you guys just given the science behind that is really helpful. I do learn quite a bit. Yeah, for the the Smith machine is great if you're if you're newer to it and we're kind of getting that mind muscle connection going. Yeah. But you're yeah. right, there's like no stabilizers involved at all on a Smith machine squat. Yeah. And when you transition to the bar, you're like, oh, you, you realize how much stabilization you have to do to do a squat once you transition to the bar. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, I, I appreciate you sharing that because a lot of people will say like, well, I've worked out in the past, so I know how all of this works. And we're like, no, nah, it's, it's it's a lot more complex than knowing how to move your body. There's like you said, there's a science to it. There's a science to uh, of how the, the workout is structured, to how the rep ranges are set, the sets are mm-hmm. are built out and the progression that's built over the course of your program. And that's why you're able to, like you mentioned, you're working out before, but not seeing changes. But now you're working out with our structure, you know, with a structure. And now you're mm-hmm. noticing those changes in your body. Right. Yeah. What? How do you feel about the whole uh, group call and community aspect? Because some people, they come in and they're like, I don't, I'm not a community person, but then they always end up loving it at the end. Yeah, I love the community. In fact, there's, I think, two ladies that live not too far from me. And I have to get back on the, in the tribe and kind of try to reach out to them again and try to see if I can meet up with them. I love the community. That's something that you don't get when you're working one-on-one with a tribe. You know, so I yeah. love the community. I love people sharing stuff, you know, recipes and and things that they've just discovered or their wins. You know, it's great to see um, people, different people's wins, you know. Yeah. What What are some, uh, let's talk about mindset a little bit, because I feel like you're, you're, you know, you're mentally strong, but understandably everyone has their ups and their downs throughout right. this journey, right? Sometimes nutrition is a little bit harder. Sometimes mm-hmm. training is a little bit harder. What are some things that you've learned from us that have helped you from a mindset perspective when, you know, life's a little bit more challenging? Um, I think when we first started, I don't remember when this was, but I remember Sarah telling me that don't expect you're going to be perfect. You're going to miss some workouts. You're going to mess up on some meals. We're not expecting you to be perfect. That was really good advice. Even though I try to get every workout in, there is grace because you're like, well, we are not going on vacation. It's okay to miss it. Just hip, go back into it. That is really important to tell people because, you know, you don't want people to feel like, oh, I'm missing a week. Now I got to, you know, start from scratch. Just start where you left off and just make it work. I think that's the biggest yeah. thing that, um, that you could have told us. And I just remember that from the start. Yeah, it's a, uh... It, it, yeah, fitness is this funny thing, right? I'm sure if we didn't tell you that when you came in, you would have been like, oh, I have to be perfect with all of this in order right. to succeed. But, you know, life happens. You know, we when we went to, to Washington, I think you're still able to get all your workouts in when we went to Washington for the yeah, event. Yeah, I'm pretty but, adamant you know, about getting all my workouts in. I may have more challenges with the food, but I'm definitely getting the yeah, workouts in. There was some good food there. Because I love doing them, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there, there was go- good food in Washington. Yeah, there was definitely good food. The, the yeah. workout room at the hotel was packed. I mean, there was like, I'm trying yeah. to like, you try to get your weights and hoard them to the side so you have them. But there were a lot of people in there doing weight workouts. More, Most I've ever seen yeah. in a hotel gym. Yeah, which says a lot about the type of people that go to the conference, which is great. I was right. I was happy to see that, but I definitely went at a different time than everyone else because yeah, everyone was using all the machines, all the treadmills, all the weights were, were being used yeah. up. Right. Yeah. yeah. I think so, the other thing uh, I really curious is oh, to, sorry. Oh, sorry, go for it. The other thing I really like is the cardio part of it. Cause before that I was kind of on my Peloton doing, doing lots of cardio, lots of cardio. Tabata is what I love. And just Nick talking about you and Nick talking about the type of, cardio you want us to do and how that 
translates to either supporting our weightlifting or, or, or detracting from it was also really important. Um, so I know that I definitely do the one that you have in the program, if I fit another one in, but you given us a kind of the background and the importance of how to do the cardio and do it the way you guys suggested it has been really helpful. Yeah. So do, do you feel that as you're kind of going through the program, you're learning new things that will be able to serve you to make, to keep this sustainable after you're out of the program? Yes. Yes. I, I was just thinking about that. I'm, I'm hoping I'll still have access to all my weight workouts so I can just kind of continue yes. to cycle, cycle through them. And I know what I need to do for cardio. Um, even though coach Nick is trying to get me out to do a VO2 max test on the, on the track. And I'm like super scared. Cause I've done an FTP yeah. test and that was super like yeah, that's painful. Me off the floor when I'm done. <laughs> yeah. It's pain. FTP tests are, are, are torture for anyone that's ever done one. Yeah. It's 20 minutes of torture. You think you're going to die. Um, so yeah, so I, I really believe that I'll have the tools I need to continue. Um, when I get kicked out the program, I say that because it's like, I don't want to leave. <laughs> yeah. We, we, we won't kick you out, but yeah, you'll still have access to all of that. And yeah. it, you know, from what you're sharing, it sounds like you gaining a better understanding of why you're doing what you're doing and what's the reasoning behind what you're doing is the thing that's helping you understand how to keep this sustainably after. Would that be accurate? Right, right. Okay. So we'd love to ask you pieces of advice because like you mentioned earlier, we try to have this honest conversation with everyone before they start of, uh, you know, life's going to happen. You're not going to be able to do all of your workouts. You're not going to be able to respect nutrition the whole way through. Like life is going to happen. Mm -hmm. And so how, how did you personally handle, you know, the speed bumps of life as you've been in the program? I actually schedule my workouts. I've been traveling a lot because I lots of family responsibilities. So I've been doing lots of travel. Like I'll drive eight hours to Maryland and then I'll get there, drop my stuff off and go to the gym and get my workout in. So I've, I make it a priority. Um, so that's, that's um, one of the, one of the big things for me. And the other thing is I trust the program. You know, I might look at it and like, oh my goodness, now I have like, there's only three exercises in here. Uh, why is there only three? And usually I get six or four or five. And I'm like, well, there's probably a reason for it. Let me just trust the pro. So I think the biggest thing is like trust in the program, trust in what you're giving us. And, you know, try everything out. I am guilty of like saying, oh, I don't know if I can do this. I'm not sure. And then I'll say later, okay, I tried it with the lighter weight. It was okay. I'm going to go a little bit high. So I think trust in the program, just trying stuff out with a lighter weight and lighter weight doesn't mean it doesn't count. Cause I know my, yeah. um, I have two wrote, I had two rotated cuffs. One got, one got repaired in surgery. The other one I still have, but it's stronger than it was. My arm is stronger than it was before I started the program just because of all the, the shoulder work that I'm doing. And yeah. without you all, I would have been, quote unquote, baby in that shoulder and not trying to work it. And a physical therapist just confirmed with me that you can strengthen that shoulder from that has a torn rotator cuff. You can rehabilitate it. So you guys have just provided me with the tools to do that. So I think it comes down to trust in the program. We all got interviewed. We talked about all our aches, pains, injuries, and you all build a program to help us work with what we've got. Yeah. How, how does it feel to not have to worry as much or like you use the word baby, like the baby, your shoulder, your lower back as much? How does that feel? That feels pretty awesome. It feels it feels great. I feel a little freedom there that um, that I wouldn't have felt if I hadn't signed up with you all. Yeah, I feel like I feel like people as a this is what I've noticed from 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 coaching a lot of people is uh, over the years, people start to lose trust in their body a little bit, yeah. Um, whether it's in terms of like their health or physical abilities, and then they start to, like you mentioned, baby their body or certain areas or certain joints, and then they shy away from putting, 
useful stressors on it that mm -hmm. would actually allow them to become stronger. So that area that you're babying is actually getting weaker and weaker and weaker and more prone to injury because you're babying it so much. And I feel like you being willing to trust the process and kind of challenge yourself a little bit, again, starting with lighter weights and kind of building up in the movement right. has allowed you to strengthen those areas, which is the thing that needs to happen when you feel like you need to baby an area. Right. I'd much rather do this than have to go under the knife again. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Workouts are hard, but surgeries is, uh, yeah, it's scary. There's risk for complications. There's, right. yeah, there's so much that comes with it. Yeah. yeah. And then Nick also sent um, me an article, uh, um, uh, um, scientific article, just supporting why rehabilitating a, a shoulder that has a torn rotator cuff is good and what it should involve. So that was really helpful. Yeah. I feel like, um, again, we work with a lot of people that are type A. So you being kind of have a background scientist, like you like to have the understanding mm -hmm. yeah. and kind of like the 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 reasoning and the logic and the, you know the proof behind why you're why you're doing what you're doing and why it's working and why it's providing the results. So I'm happy you're getting all of that. And that's that's there on purpose because yeah, you know, it's if it's one thing if we brought you through the whole program and we never explained to you why you're doing what you're doing and how it's working, then when you'd end the program, you'd be like, I look great, but how do I maintain this? How do I improve this? How do I continue with this? Because there would be no understanding of it. Right. Yeah. So love to ask you a question about a piece of advice. So a lot of people that listen to the podcast are either in the program, considering being on the program or on just on their own, you know, on their own health journey. From having been in the program for several months now, what are pieces of advice that you can pass off to people from someone that has built lean muscle in their 60s, from someone that has improved their body composition in their 60s? I would say that working with a trainer, a coach, will allow you to always push your body to a level that you can't do individually. Um, you can follow a bunch of people, but they don't really know your body. They don't know what your body been through and you're not going to be able to get yeah. a, a specific specificity of training that spe whole specificity of training you won't be able to achieve that on your own because we just individuals we just don't have that training and that experience um, of working with a lot of people and knowing what works which is what you all have so I would say people if they're on the fence they should just sign up <laughs> yeah so I'd love to ask you about like was there any apprehension about getting an online coach because i think you mentioned you work with people in person yeah, before was this your I first was, kind of online experience i was kind of curious how it would work out i know there's a lot of a lot of people doing online coaching so i was kind of curious how it was going to work out and the fact that you all didn't tell me what okay you need to do these exercises and do this kind of this level of weight I've done enough weightlifting and mature enough there that i know like okay this needs to be hard as opposed to going in, like, like I said, bicep curls and doing 10 pounds and thinking I'm done, you know? Um, yeah. So I think I wasn't sure how it was going to work, but I used the video, push the video feature, and I do do videos and send them to the coaches. Say, is this right? Yeah, beautiful. Or am I doing it right? So. Yeah, I, I think that's the most underutilized aspect of the program is people having the ability to send the, uh, film themselves doing an exercise and sending it privately to their coach because yeah. that's where you get like, you know, all the feedback. It's like, hey, your elbow is doing this, your shoulder is doing this, your your hips are moving this way. We need right. to adjust that. So I'm, I'm happy that you're using that because it's it's so valuable. Yeah, it's been it's been great. <laughs> yeah, so. You know, let me ask you this, um, you know, last last words of wisdom that you'd like to pass off to the people listening, because usually when we record these episodes, it will typically be it'll resonate with the people that were in similar shoes as yours before. And I'll be like, well, Karen did it. Potentially I can do it. It's possible for me, too. And so actually, let me rephrase the question. Would you what is a piece of advice you give to yourself like a year ago before you started? A year ago, probably I'm going to the gym and I'm doing all this stuff, but I'm not really getting the results. So what am I going to do about it? And just looking and searching 
for some way to get my body to where I want to be. And just realizing it's never too late, you know, just because you're over 60 or over 50 doesn't mean that I need to give up on my body. And this is what, this is all it's going to be. I mean, there, there is possibilities for you to, to change what your body looks like and you shouldn't just give up on it. Yeah. That's kind of yeah. what I and would I, say. Yeah. And I feel like that's such a surprise to a lot of people in their 60s and 70s that they still have the ability to transform their body. Why, right. why do you feel that is? Why do you feel that? Why do you feel that people are so apprehensive or don't think that it's doable as they get older? I think they think they lose their strength. They're going to get hurt or they just don't know how to. I think people have relied so much on cardio to control their weight Yeah, that they don't know that there's weight training and having more muscle is a better way to control your weight than just trying to do tons of cardio to burn off the calories. It's just a vicious like you're the hamster on the wheel. <laughs> so yeah. that's one of the big it, things it I learned. I have to do all that cardio to get to my body to where I want it to be. Yeah. How much time does that save you compared to when you're tra training 12 hours, a, 12 hours a week? Yeah. Like 12 hours a week, I probably wouldn't go back there. What happened during that time? I lost a lot of muscle tone. I lost a yeah. lot. I was looking like, what happened to my arms? You know, what happened to my delts? I lost a lot of muscle tone because I was, you know, biking, running, swimming, you know, doing bricks. I mean, and maybe getting to the gym one or two days a week for like, 45 minutes. So, um, yeah, this is definitely a lot yeah. less time and better results in terms of my body long term, in terms of stability and composition and what I want it to look look like. I was thin, but I wasn't, I didn't have the muscle tone. And for me, since I have osteopenia, I have to pay attention to having that muscle tone. Yeah, I feel like you know, this is a perfect example of you doing, you know, it was a, a sprint triathlon. A, like if cardio was a solution, you would have looked leaner and more full and had more lean muscle mass when you would have been doing all that cardio. But it was the opposite, right? You start to look a little bit smaller, softer in terms of like less definition in the right. muscle. And it just proves the point that cardio is not the way to get there. You can do a lot less, but just be efficient with your efforts and get a lot mm -hmm. better outcomes. Right, right. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Karen, I just want to say a massive thank you for taking the time to record with me today. It was great getting to meet you in person uh, in Washington. I'm sure we're going to cross paths again at some of the other events that are going to be happening. Um, and yeah, any last words that you'd like to share with, with the audience or that you'd just like to share? Um, I just thank you for being interested in my story. And like the most fun part of this whole journey is like, I talked to my son and we compare notes about weightlifting. <laughs> so he's a, he's a huge, huge, huge lifter. And I say, Hey, I just did so-and-so. So -and -so. We'll talk about renegade rows. I said, yeah, I just did X number of pounds of renegade rows. He says, yeah, I do so-and-so pounds too. So we like, we trade um, weightlifting stories. So that's been super fun. <laughs> that, that's amazing. Have you done a, have you done a workout with them yet? Um, I have not. That's something I'm going to put on the list. We'll have to do a workout together. Yeah, you should. You should just try to kick his butt on a leg press or something like a safe exercise where you can go heavier. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I love I love doing training sessions with my mom. It's so or my dad. It's so cool to be able to work out with them. Um, and yeah, there's just so much pleasure in, in, in training and sweating and putting out effort with someone. And yeah, I think you're I think I think your son would love that. Yeah, I think that would be fun. We did have, he did his first half marathon with me. I had been running for a while. And so we did that together. So this would be something else fun to do together. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. If you guys do it, take a photo, post it in the tribe. I think a lot okay. of members would be happy to see that and maybe inspire them to work out with their kids as well. Okay. We'll do. Awesome. Well, Karen, thank you very much for jumping on the show. Everyone, thank you very much for listening. If you want more information, you know, about the work that we do, by helping people with their transformation, the first link down below, you guys can check it out and we will see you in the next episode. Bye everyone.